fasilitas perkuliahan di IAIN Laroi Babogor meliputi gedung milik sendiri, lab komputer, lab micro teaching, Pustakaan Musola Kantin Lahan parkir Unit kegiatan mahasiswa CCTV 24 jam, free wifi, beasiswa, dan lapangan putsam. Tentu saja, fasilitas-fasilitas ini dapat dinikmati dan menjadi nilai plus bagi mahasiswa dalam kegiatan belajar mengajar. Tak hanya itu, di luar kegiatan dalam kelas, Banyaknya ragam unit kegiatan mahasiswa menjadikan IAIN Laroi Babogor tepat dijadikan sebagai pilihan tepat untuk melanjutkan pendidikan. Unit kegiatan mahasiswa seperti Himpunan Mahasiswa atau HIMA, Badan Eksekutif Mahasiswa atau BEM, Pencinta Alam Pantera, Kaligrafi, BEM, Komunitas Mahasiswa Pencinta Snapshot, Futsal, Hadroh. Rangkaian prestasi ini bisa menjadi bukti bahwa PIN Laroi Babogor menghasilkan mahasiswa yang berkompeten di segala bidang. Dengan ini, visi IIN Laroi Babogor yang ingin menjadikan IIN Laroi Babogor sebagai kampus yang mampu bersaing pada tingkat nasional pada tahun 2027. Sekolah Tinggi Agama Islam Darul Tauhid Bandung menjadi sekolah tinggi agama Islam unggul yang berlandaskan tauhid menuju generasi ahli zikir, fikir, dan ikhtiar. Mewujudkan insan yang berahakul karima yang dilandasi nilai-nilai tauhid. Mencetak generasi Islam yang cerdas, kompetitif, yang memiliki sertifikasi internasional dan profesional sesuai bidangnya. Melahirkan generasi yang memiliki jiwa dakwah, yang mampu mewujudkan Islam rahmatan dan alamin. Mewujudkan generasi yang memiliki jiwa kepemimpinan, leadership, dan entrepreneurship. Serta mewujudkan generasi yang sehat, berestetika, dan berwawasan lingkungan. Cek, cek. Sekolah Tinggi Ilmu Bahasa Arab Setiba Darululung Bayangnya Harpa Mekasan Alamat Botan Daya Palangaan Mekasan Madura Jawa Timur
SK Dirjen Pendidikan Islam nomor 6901 tahun 2016 Sejarah Setiba Darululu Banyuwangi Cek, cek. Cek, 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 satu, dua, tiga. Ya, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahirobbilalamin. <tuh> Gunaka Al-Mutahadis Al-Ba'ah Min Min Hamin University of Lisbon Of Lisbon Summa Al-Mutahadis Min King London Summa Al-Mutahadis Al-Salis Al-Azhar University Hadis Arabi American International University Sumal Mutahadis Al Khomis Min National University of Malaysia Ayuah Bihadil Fursoh Nabdadi Jam'atana Bikiro'ati Al-Bas Malah Jama'atan Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Suma Nastamir Ila Ila Flinari speaker Al Ula, wahwa adduktur Luis Cardoso, min jamiah of Lisbon, al waktu al makan faliyatafadol alaihi mashkuro. Sorry, Dr. Louis, uh, you with us in this room. Dr. Louis, uh, speak by English, uh, Mr. Moderator. Dr. Louis, uh, speak by English, uh, Mr. Moderator. Hello, good morning. Hi, yes. You really with us in this uh, room, Dr. Luis Cardoso. This time is yours, Mr. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Am I am I am I audible? Can you please confirm if I'm audible? Yes. Uh, Ejaan Hukohos, yes? Please, Luis Cardoso. Luis Cardoso. For your time. Yes. Ejaan Hukohos, ya? Dr. Luis Aradri, Ayu Rita, dan 
المادة Yes, time is yours. You can uh, screen share screen now. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Greetings from Portugal. Good afternoon. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa rahmatullah. First of all, I would like to thank the kind invitation to be here. It's a great honor, it's a great pleasure to be here with you, dear colleagues, and to share some thoughts and share some ideas regarding some of the most important challenges that we have today regarding education, regarding technology, and regarding the common future that we are now um, enhancing, that we all want the best for our students. And of course, this conference is very important to connect teachers and researchers from different countries and to share ideas and to share best practices. I would like to share a presentation. I think it's visible. So my dear colleagues, my dear colleagues, our common effort for the 21st century is strengthening human resources in this era of society 5.0. And my dear colleagues, when we think about our common horizons, we have to look at some of the most important challenges regarding 2030. And these challenges regarding 2030 are all about knowledge and skills for the 21st century, namely professional and citizenship challenges. So my dear colleagues, I'm sure we all agree that the COVID-19 pandemic brought us a lot of difficulties a lot of challenges, but also a lot of opportunities. And I would like to begin this presentation by sharing some ideas from the OECD, uh, a report from the OECD called the State of School Education One Year into the COVID Pandemic. So we all know that during school closures, digital resources became extraordinarily important. And of course, these resources were the lifeline for education for all countries, for your country, for my country, in different continents. Digital resources were the lifeline that enabled us to go ahead with our educational systems. But we had to adapt. We had to adapt to teach and learn online sometimes very quickly. And of course, the opportunities that digital technologies offer go well beyond a stopgap solution during the pandemic. One of the most important lessons from this period is that technology and education are now a combination for the future. And of course, digital technology allows to find new answers to what people learn, how people learn, where people learn, and when they learn. And all this is possible because we have now the resources and our governments are now struggling and giving teachers all the support they deserve to go ahead with changes in educational systems. So my dear colleagues, today, Digital learning systems cannot just teach students. Of course, we have to observe how students study. We have to observe the kind of tasks they are doing. And we must understand they have interests and they have expectations. So we must connect all this in order to have a very good educational system. 
So all this together gives us some clues regarding the transition to remote instruction and the subsequent reopening of schools. And we found out that we had to establish sanitary protocols in all our countries, and all this had a profound impact on teachers' work, of course. But this crisis also required that teachers had to acquire new skills and prepare materials suited to virtual learning environments. So another great lesson from this COVID-19 pandemic is that we have to move on and to move forward regarding the acquisition of new skills, digital skills, not just for our teachers, because we have to train our teachers to have these skills, but also to give our students the same skills, the same skills to enter the labor market. And this is very important because the World Economic Forum projects that in this year, at least 54% of all employees will need reskilling and upskilling to respond to changing work requirements. So this means that our universities are more important than ever to assist teachers, to assist students in order to give them these reskilling and upskilling responses. And we also know that young people need the skills to rapidly learn. They have to adapt, they have to practice resiliency, and they have to take advantage of entrepreneurial mindsets. So all this is very important in order to give our teachers and also to give our students the proper tools to go ahead with teacher training and to go ahead with adaptation regarding the labor market. So this changing environment calls for a great transformation and this transformation is affecting all our universities around the world. So this is not just about learning, this is not just about teaching, this is not just about knowledge, this is also about values, principles and skills. All this is connected more than ever. And young people must learn to learn. This is another valuable lesson. Learn to learn is absolutely vital so that we can adapt, we can go on, and we can help our students to secure work opportunities. So when we think about these work opportunities, of course, we are also thinking what employers want. And employers overwhelmingly agree that young employees need soft skills, such as communication, creative problem solving, and entrepreneurial thinking. So these skills are absolutely vital for our students. This is why we have to enhance in our universities the capability of, of giving these skills in our curriculum. So these are very important ideas for the next years to come. And when we compare, for example, the list of skills that we had in 2015 and the list of skills that were important in 2020, we see some changes, we see some differences. Uh, of course, we all understand that complex problem solving still is the number one top one skill all over the world because it helps students to solve, to adapt, and to evolve. But then, when we compare the list of skills between 2015 and 2020, we see some changes. And and second, we have critical thinking. And critical thinking is now vital for our students because it helps them to adapt. It helps them to evolve together with creativity, together with 
people management, together with emotional intelligence. And my dear colleagues, let's take a look at emotional intelligence, and cognitive flexibility that we didn't find in this list in 2015. But in 2020, these skills are very important. And in 2022, these skills are vital and they will become absolutely vital in the next years to come. So when we analyze the skills that we must give to our students, number one skill, as we said before, is learn to learn. This means to participate and thrive in a rapidly evolving world. So youth must become power learners. And becoming power learners is, of course, adapting the role of teachers as well. So now we teach, we share knowledge, but we also are mentors. We are accompanying our students in order to get the knowledge. So learning to learn helps young people rapidly gain skills and knowledge to adapt. And this is vital. Second, when it comes to learning performance, 40% is due to metacognition. And metacognition is another item that is valuable for us in our universities. So this means that we must organize in our teaching and learning methodologies in connection with metacognition. So this connectivity between learning teaching and metacognition is also a new framework that we have to understand that we have to incorporate in our curriculum for the future. Skill number two is learn to discern. And why is this so important? Because nowadays we have a flood of information and youth must discern what is factual and reliable. So. During the COVID-19 pandemic, young people had a lot of information. And uh, sometimes they didn't get the most important information, the information that was useful, the information that was vital. So one of our main responsibilities is to help our students to select information they need. So learn to discern is also to connect our students to the right type of information. Then, of course, regarding the perspective of the most important skills for the World Economic Forum, number one skill is so-called futures literacy. So literacy, uh, in general terms, is the ability to read and write. But this ability evolved a lot in the last decade. And nowadays, it means much more than the ability to read and write. It means to have a lot of skills to understand our world, to decode images, to decode sounds, to decode uh, complex messages. So nowadays, our society is, of course, moving onwards and moving forward to cope with this new challenge. So we all must walk together side by side to create a more futures literate society. So this means that our universities must also work about these literacies that we have to work with our students as well. Skill number two for the World Economic Forum, it's so-called systems thinking because almost all the challenges presented by the effects of COVID-19 relate to systems. And systems thinking is a mindset to think, communicate and learn about systems to make the full patterns clearer, improve and share the understanding of problems and see how to face them effectively. Skill number three is anticipation. So this means that we have to anticipate changes. We must be able to adapt very quickly. 
we must be conscious that everything is changing around us. So we have to take uh, actions in order to give our students also the possibility to adapt regarding these changes, regarding the flood of information, regarding the immense of information they have to deal with every day. So this is in practice um, a, a new a new way of um, acting, of being, of living. And of course, our behaviors also must change regarding anticipation. Because anticipation is to understand that changes that are all around us are going to have impact in our daily basis. So this is why we need another skill that is also very important, that is strategic foresight. So this is a big challenge, dear colleagues. This is a big challenge that requires a new strategic thinking attitude for governments, businesses, organizations, and people to better understand change and the future. And of course, we all live and we all work in a world that is changing so fast regarding information regarding communication, regarding technology, regarding education. Everything is changing so fast. So we need strategic foresight so that our universities are able to cope with these great challenges. Yeah. So this foresight is of course connected with the ability to, co to, to um, ally education, technology, skills, competences, and the exercise of citizenship. And when we connect knowledge and understanding, skills, values, and attitudes, then we can create a list of the most important um, knowledge and understanding topics, skills, and values, and attitudes that we have to work with our students. So this means that we have to understand that, of course, we all live in different countries. We have different realities. But one of the most important values is to respect differences, is to respect different cultures, is to respect different systems that we have in different systems in different countries. So when we do this, we can have a global framework that can help us. But this global framework must be flexible, must be able to adapt to the reality in different countries, in different regions, in different cities, in different villages. So this possibility is helping a lot to understand how we are going to learn in the next years. And we are going to learn with skills, with values and attitudes. This means, of course, that these skills like critical thinking, just like we said before, are connected with understanding knowledge, but also connected with values and attitude regarding empathy, for example, regarding sustainability, regarding respect for differences and values. And this is so, so important for our future. So this is why nowadays we discuss this concept of global citizenship that includes attitudes and values, digital literacy, and a lot of other literacies and knowledge and skills. So everything has impact, my dear colleagues, everything has impact. So this is why conferences, for example, uh, by sharing knowledge, by sharing new ideas, by sharing new perspectives are so important to move on and to go ahead to the next years with an optimistic point of view. So my dear colleagues, what we have to do is to uh, try to create a bridge between these three levels, attitudes and values, digital literacy, being open-minded, helping others, using cultural lenses, looking both inside and outside of the country. This means 
an intercultural perspective with respect from one country to another. And this is vital. And of course, to connect with knowledge and skills that the labor market requires. So, my dear friends, I would like to end this presentation by highlighting some of the key ideas for this 21st century and for these challenges. So we must connect education with technology. We must connect education with technology, with skills, competences, values, and principles. This is why the role of the teacher is always changing and more than ever is changing in this 21st century. Nowadays, a teacher must be a mentor, must guide the students, must guide the students towards knowledge. And skills are vital for this great change in this 21st century. This is why we need to invest in education, we need to support education, we need to adapt, we need to evolve. And we have to create opportunities of sharing ideas in international forums like this one. We have to create opportunities to connect. We have to create opportunities to networking. We have to create opportunities to work together to find out what are the best solutions for my university, my secondary, different levels of education, different classes, different classrooms, because students are all different and we must be able to work with them in their diversity, respecting this diversity and of course, by respecting, by using tolerance, by using knowledge and skills, we can go ahead and be optimistic regarding our horizon and our horizon, as I said in the beginning of this presentation, is the horizon 2030. And 2030 is our great and common horizon for education. So my dear friends and my dear colleagues, wow. I would like to end this presentation by saying that we must be united by these common values of education because education builds strong societies. Education builds the foundations of our systems. Education builds the, the, the roots, the foundations of all the architecture that we have in our country. And education is absolutely vital for our future. So let's work together dear colleagues and dear friends, and let's create a better world for our students, for our children. Thank you so much, dear colleagues, for listening. And of course, if you have any questions, I will be more than willing to answer them. So feel free to contact me. And again, I thank the kind invitation that was made by the organizing committee to be here. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, for, uh, uh, Dr. Professor Luis Cardoso, for your presentation. If any feedback, response, or question and answer for the, from the audience, I open the floor for just one short uh, response, please. Any response? Is there any question from the audience, please raise your hand. And I just want to remind you, do not forget to uh, what fulfill, yeah, to fulfill your uh, presentation, uh, your presentation attend list attendance. Thank you, uh, Dr. Luis Cardoso for your amazing presentation. We learned so much from uh, your presentation, but maybe we look forward to keep contact with you uh, in the next time. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you.
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Thank I hope we can meet very soon. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And next, please. Uh, I think we will have next speaker. We will move to next speaker. I see from the list of the participant here, Mr. Prodan, uh, Dr. Prodan Mahbub Ibn Siraj from American International University uh, had collaborated and had participated in this uh, meeting room. Are you here, Mr. Uh, Prodan Mahbub C. Ibn Siraj? If you are ready to deliver your presentation, come forward, please. Uh, we will give uh, about seven up to 10 minutes for you. Oke, okay. uh, Can you hear me, please? Hello. Is it okay right now? Samir ila al mutahaddis asani wa adukur fuad al-rajik min King's Hello, can you hear me? London. Mr. Brodan, you have yeah, an access you to you have an access to uh, voice? Yeah, can you hear me right now? Is it okay? Sorry, you can uh, you can deliver your presentation now. Please. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, very good. Yes, Mr. Afternoon from Bangladesh. Okay, just give me a bit time. <clears throat> Yeah, is it okay for you? Can you see my screen? Yes, we can okay. see your screen. Okay, thank okay, you very much and uh, very good afternoon to all of you uh, for inviting me to this session. Basically, I would like to share my experience as an early career researcher, what should they do uh, while they will start their journey uh, in the area of research. So. Uh, in this regard, uh, I think uh, it's my own experience that networking is very important issues for a research for a researcher. Because uh, why these are important? Uh, today I will give you just a brief idea about this. So networking normally we know that networking is uh, types of exchanging information <coughs> among the um, uh, community of the same interest peoples. And sometimes it can be also interdisciplinary. So less or more, we have uh, idea regarding, sorry. So less or more, we know <coughs> what is networking. <coughs> what do we think? This one is also true for a researcher, but researcher might have some own special uh, platforms where they might uh, surf and where they might be uh, joined. So today I would like to discuss about this. Okay. <clears throat> what are the functions of uh, networking? Basically, uh, in those platforms, those I will <coughs> discuss very soon later <coughs> of this part. Yeah, basically, it will <laughs> online. Uh, uh, online, CV, like uh, I mean, online persona, it will help you to uh, disseminate your studies. Uh, it will help you to collaborate with so many other researchers in your field or interdisciplinary. Uh, then you can uh, manage your um, uh, information. I mean, that you have published or the things you did. And you can also see the impact 
impact of your research okay. to, in your field or to the other uh, other fields. It also helps you to write a good literature because whenever you will be connected within uh, your own research interested community, then you will find what the other people are publishing or doing or working. And whenever you come across those published things, uh, you can put this one into your uh, literature review and it will improve uh, your uh, knowledge in existing uh, existing literature. So it also open opportunity for you to uh, research with other peoples. And you can also see the analytical uh, analysis of uh, of this, uh, of your research. So I will uh, give you idea about this. And finally, uh, this one will help you for making a community. As we are here virtually connected from different parts of the world uh, uh, in the, uh, on the same platforms. Similarly, you also go through uh, with these types of functions. Okay. So why networking is important? Basically, networking through virtual world, through several platforms uh, of uh, research community. Why these are important? These are important to increase your interdisciplinary accents. I mean, what have you come across in your field? You can also take uh, new ideas from the other field to accommodate within your field. It also foster your creativity. Uh, through co coming across so many research works, you can be yourself creative. Then it can also help you to explore new methodologies. I mean, in your field, uh, you can uh, you can use some other uh, some methods which are not uh, available in your field, but you can uh, adapt this one from the other field. And it also very important to up to date your online presence. I mean, um, how many papers, how many publications you have published uh, and all these things in some platforms automatically come into your profile. So it will save your time a lot. Then you come across new identification of knowledge, creation of knowledge, and you can see uh, how much uh, worthy your research work is. I mean, it will help you to ensure your quality. And finally, it will help you to disseminate your uh, research works. So final thing is that, uh, what thing this platform will give you as a researcher uh, through making networking. Uh, basically, you can see the impact of your research papers uh, through how many people, uh, through your update information. Then you can see how many followers if you have uh, number of comments people making on your research work, uh, number of retweets, shares, reshares, and how many people download. You can also see this one in your profile through maintaining these platforms. So uh, it will give you the idea that uh, you can increase your connections with so other many people who are in your field. Uh, it can also help you to uh, uh, to get a lot of resources uh, from different sources from your community. Then it also create opportunity for funding and you can also be invited to so many other uh, places like uh, conferences or seminar to get uh, or to, you know, to attend and to deliver space. And you also see your the participation. So what are the platforms? Uh, I think less or more, some of them are very popular, some may not. Okay, the popular uh, platforms are like uh, Pablons, WorkIt, uh, ResearchGate, Google Scholar, uh, then, uh, Academia, uh, Dimensions, uh, Frontiers, LinkedIn, uh, uh, Twitter. So among these, some are truly for and absolutely for researchers like Pablons. Work it, uh, Google Scholar, Research Gate, Dimensions, Frontiers, this and Loof. These are very uh, especially in, in built for researchers. So, how this work? Uh, so, first we will start with Work it. Work it means uh, open researcher and contributor ID. 
uh, whenever you open this account with this workit, it will give you a uh, 16 digit number. It is like your passport number. As a researcher, you have, uh, uh, you have unique identification. Uh, it's like a, a DUI number of your uh, research papers. As a research person, you are distinct. You are separated absolutely from the other researcher in your field or other field. So this is works like this works like a DUI. So it helps to connect uh, uh, the people within your field and sometimes uh, uh, field across your field. Uh, and this most important issue is that this work it is totally free, free of cost. And here you can maintain your CV. I will show this one through my uh, profile with ARC uh, work it. So uh, this is uh, my profile at work it. Look at how it works. Basically, uh, work it have this 16 digit uh, a number. It is unique for you and your profile, uh, your biography, then your employment history. And this WorkIt ID also help you to link with other ID like Escopas, uh, Google, or Web of Science ID. It will be automatically interlinked with this. Then so my keywords, my key research fields. Okay, so uh, I can put here and my works, I mean the, my research paper uh, I have uh, put here and some research people, whenever your research people will publish and if it have it has a DUI link, it will automatically add it to your profile in under box. So this is my peer review activities. Uh, it also uh, added here automatically. Uh, from I reviewed, I mean, uh, to what journal I have reviewed, uh, I just uh, send them uh, and request them to accept a mail and whenever they will accept and it will automatically add it to your work it. So it will also give you recognition as a reviewers, how many uh, review papers you have uh, reviewed and the reviewed activities will be preserved here. And most important issue is that uh, whenever you are going to submit your paper to a journal like Taylor San Francis, uh, Springer, Elsevier, uh, often uh, you are asked to create your own account you have to register for your account first, then you can submit. So in this regard, if you have a uh, work ID, uh, whenever you will go to go for a station, there will be this symbol. This symbol is work it symbol. And you just click on this and there will be another pop-up. This pop-up will ask you to allow, I mean this pop-up your work it account. And whenever you sign in with your work it, it will automatically uh, create it, your account in that journal. Okay, look at here, Helion, I'm going to open, uh, I'm going to log in with this uh, Helion and I use a work it ID. Uh, whenever I click here, there is this pop-up uh, pop and I uh, just click on and it goes. Okay, so in this way, it will a uh, great help for our researcher to save your time. And this is the work kit, uh, it just uh, search with words work it and you can find this registration link. Then Pavlons, uh, nowadays Pavlons is no more. It has been accumulated with a wave of science uh, just uh, two weeks ago. And uh, this, this account is truly for uh, researchers, okay. Uh, it uh, it helps you to find out journals, top researchers, top reviewers, um, top research field, uh, top reviewers in your country, in your university. So a lot of information will give you uh, through these problems. Okay, problems and work it can be synchronized. There is option within problems and within the web of science, the new account. Uh, you just sync with work it and whatever information within your work it, it will automatically come into Publons. So look at, uh, this is my profile with uh, Publons. Uh, 
most important issues as yeah, as you are a researcher you have to go through so writing so many papers so if you are uh, if you will do review activities i think you will be a good uh, uh, research paper writers so pablons will help you to provide you training training on how to review manuscripts so there is the 10 modules and after getting or going through this training then uh, you will um, uh, get a certificate okay this one is academic graduate when i complete my module with this i will be obtained as graduate academic graduate uh, with publons and later uh, when i will mentor the other new members and then i will be mentored so uh, this one will come out with that and excellent reviewer they will mark you as excellent reviewer uh, on the uh, basis of uh, basis on the your activities so look at here in this i have obtained excellent reviewer scale uh, i am an academic graduate and a mentor and obviously you also be uh, this is my publication numbers uh, total citation h index and how many papers i have reviewed i have reviewed 186 all these are here and look at this this is my research fields you can also put your research fields and very important issues that uh, within this research field just one click you can see uh, what are the journals within this and what are the uh, authors are within this and who are uh, top reviewers within your field you can see this one okay. so basically it is uh, your uh, online cv also it will track your citation, you, it will manage your reviews, uh, it will maintain your profile. Uh, you have to put your information over there. And you can also uh, get uh, uh, your CV, uh, just one click. Uh, and uh, on the CV, how many papers you have reviewed, all these uh, titles of all this paper will be written on your CV. So later you can see uh, what are the, um, uh, what the things nowadays researchers are doing in your field uh, with these titles. Next, you can see it also preserve your publications. So you look at this is the publication. These are the uh, name of the journals to what journals, how many papers I have published. Look at language testing in Asia. I have published three, education research international two. So all the uh, uh, all the journals to what you have published uh, will be maintained over there. And look at this, this is the verified reviews for what journal, how many manuscripts I have reviewed, those are here. So look at, I have reviewed for uh, 41 journals, for 41 journals, and all this list of 41 journals here, and how many manuscripts I have reviewed for them, say for, and you will, you can also see that uh, this is the web of indexed marking, uh, web of science indexed marking. Okay, some are uh, web of science indexed uh, journals, and some are scopus, and some are merely peered. So all the information will kept. It will be automatically within your Pablo's profile. So it will uh, it will a uh, great help for a researcher to be visible all over the world. Okay, so it also give you metrics. Uh, uh, month by month, in what one what month, uh, how many papers you repeat, all I'm these sorry, things. Sir. Yes, uh, just. Can you shut down your presentation in the morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I am go I'm yeah. running out. So. Thank, you. Uh, thank you. So, this is the say for in my uh, English language teaching field. The, uh, those people are the uh, top reviewers in my list. So, you can and see this one and you can also see uh, who are the top reviewers in your country uh, at your university and uh, you can search articles uh, and you can search journals you can search uh, uh, researchers so you there is the options you can search with many things so research get i think less or more this one is more popular this has get also for truly uh, for researchers then Google Scholar, it also for researchers and academia. Academia is like a social uh, networking. And after this, uh, whenever you will uh, come across so many, through so many uh, platforms, you might have uh, so many collaborations, so many researchers from, uh, you will be connected with so many people all over the world, like uh, I have here. I have connection with uh, China, Indonesia, 
Malaysia and so many. So I hope you also have this at that. Most important issues is that maintaining this uh, platform, you must be ethically honest. Okay, so ethical issue, you should be because you have to you have to give the credits to the people from where you have taken. Okay. So thank you very much for giving me this time. Okay. Is it all right? Okay, thank you, Mr. Prodan, for your nice presentation. And we learn about a lot from your presentation that we need to uh, improve our networking and research collaboration. And next, uh, we will move to another presenter, Pak Dede, who will be the next presenter? The next Can presenter or uh, is Atali, Dr. Ahmed Yosef. Al Magister bin Al Azhar Al Jamia Al Wabdiya. I hope my voice is this clear. Please uh, confirm. My voice is clear. Okay, sir, your voice is clear. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, sorry for uh, for the noise. I have the technical uh, electrical problem, so I am. This is this, is the, the sound of the machine. <laughs> so uh, I'm very sorry for that. Uh, okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. In the name of Allah, I uh, I'm very happy to to participate in this wonderful conference and uh, thank you for uh, for this uh, this effort in, uh, in the in the organization. Uh, great thanks to all organizing committee uh, for in for having me. Uh, Healthcare poor in the society five era general overview. overview. Uh, our agenda to, uh, today will uh, will be uh, discuss the following uh, points: mankind, the society, progress, a brief history of healthcare evaluation, uh, revolution. Sorry, healthcare for advances, uh, social medicine, and uh, artificial intelligence. Okay. Uh, the human race has uh, has gone through many developments until we uh, reach where we are today. Uh, the first society started in primitive way, and the man was just a collector of his means of life, like food and some uh, something like that. Then the matter developed and became more effective uh, in cultiva cultivating, harvesting, uh, hunting continued as well. Then he developed. We developed and invented machines. Then the industrial revolution uh, uh, come. After that, the internet entered and the means of communication and information availability developed. So the information revolution also uh, evolved. In 2060, Japan launched its uh, initiative towards uh, the fifth society, fifth society, uh, uh, which focused on human beings who through economic progress are able to solve social issues with system. So we can easily uh, name the society five as the system of systems, the system of systems. I mean that the basic schema of, of uh, society five is that data are collected from the real world and processed by computers with the results being applied in the real world. This schema is not new in itself, but to cite a, a, a familiar uh, example, this uh, this air conditioning units automatically keep a room at a, a certain temperature programmed into the unit. An air conditioner regularly measures the, the rooms and temperature, and an internal microcomputer in the in, in the device uh, measures the room temperature and compares the temperature with the registered temperature setting before. And uh, depending on these readings, airflow is activated or deactivated uh, automatically, such that the room maintains the desired temperature 
many of systems we rely on in the society use this basic mechanism. So all systems of life, all systems uh, we uh, we are going to uh, to be exposed to uh, preventive examinations, robotic caregiving, automatic agricultural industry, uh, uh, value chains, uh, automobiles, any 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 uh, system we are dealing with. All of these or organizing all of these uh, uh, society sorry systems to make a social or uh, integrated social society is the the, the the core concept of society five. I hope the, the 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 concept is clear. So society five uh, creates a sustainable society and contributes to the safety and the comfort of individuals based on specific cyber physical system. Uh, in the same context, uh, the concept of mankind society evolved with the concept of providing healthcare services developed and went through four stages, four stages of development. Uh, public health stage, the mass production, information technology, smartphone, healthcare from one to four. Healthcare one brought about the solution to major public health problems. Uh, uh, it includes preventing infectious diseases, uh, vaccines, and they make the, the, the water cleaner. Sorry, and they, they make the, the water cleaner. So it's uh, uh, it was concentrated on sanitation, because on improving what was achieved during the previous phase. Therapeutics became uh, more uh, widely available, and biotics. Doctors not not only became better and professional, but also uh, uh, make subdomains of specialities in medicine. Uh, bigger hospitals are implemented, and they uh, um, they are divided into primary care, uh, primary care hospitals, secondary care, tertiary hospitals, and these were uh, very much basics of modern medicine. Uh, healthcare three is when technology started making its way into medicine computers. Uh, the size of the whole operating theater done little good, but as they uh, they became smaller, they were used in more uh, in ever uh, more uh, devices, and also better. The internet provided healthcare with continuous access and the storage of data. Previously, the patient entered the, the triage room, and this is our experience. The triage room, for example, after accident or in an emergency and needed some investigations, x-rays, a lab test, or something like that. And to make decision, uh, uh, you have to make decision to, uh, to uh, give him the proper uh, care. The doctor waited a long time for results to be, uh, to, to, uh, to be given uh, to him by an assistant, which bring him or bring it from the laboratory or radiological department. And this is time consuming and it affects the, the status of the patient. Uh, Thus, after the adoption of United System of Hospital Stock, it became more easier for any doctor or physician in any medical department to simply obtain information from the system in shorter time, lower cost, and higher accuracy and better decision. Healthcare, uh, see also doctors entered the era of the evidence-based medicine. Medicine is not uh, uh, only uh, 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 basing the shoulders uh, of, the, of the clinical expertise, but also the other uh, there are other uh, fundamental, uh, fundamental, fundamental uh, factors like patient values and expectations, research evidence, which make the new era of evidence-based medicine. Healthcare four times are changing rapidly, and healthcare is, is developing further. Uh, we are in the middle of transformation era, new era of smart medicine. I will uh, give a hint about precision medicine and artificial intelligence, which are uh, the, 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 the main, the core of applications of healthcare core and in society five. Precision medicine is uh, based on the idea uh, that, okay. the right patient based on the right patient with the right drug at the right dose and at the right time. Personalized the medicine, uh, a concept is not new, but um, uh, uh, to be adopted is the new thing. One size doesn't fit all of persons, all of patients. As you can see, uh, some patients of the same cancer, for example, uh, have high uh, biomarkers A and B, but maybe low in C. 
and other patients on the same cancer maybe have low A and B biomarkers but high in C. This may contribute to their worse prognosis and better benefit of some uh, some drugs, and the the other may uh, may have uh, uh, and uh, completely different a completely different uh, prognosis and completely different response to this treatment. This is not, this is not only the concept but also the dosage. Uh, uh, the treatment previously it was uh, understood that all patients take the same treatment with the same dose while some of them uh, may be ultra ultra rapid metabolizers they are take off or uh, or wash this these drugs uh, fasting so they have to uh, have uh, uh, more uh, dosage or dose of drug to have the same effect and others are poor metabolizers if they took the same dose they may uh, have side effects or toxicity or something like that. Uh, this is the, the, the idea of precision of personalized medicine. Artificial intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence also uh, in, in the core of a society five has a, a great value in making the, the living comfortable, healthy promotion, optimal treatment, reduction of burden. Through these following examples, uh, robot-assisted surgery process, cognitive surgical robotics can use information from actual surgical encounters so as to improve the existing surgical techniques. This may, uh, these techniques using the robots in surgery uh, make the treatment time <clears throat> lesser, literally treatment time, and the scope of error is little. And now we can see this, uh, the idea of it. <laughs> you can observe the ro robot accuracy. How it's a, how high skills and accuracy. Uh, as you can see, the, this, uh, the accuracy and the skills of surgery without any complications to this so delicate tissue. Uh, it also, ro robots, we can also use it uh, in, in, uh, in the era of epidemics or uh, infectious diseases like this Egyptian robot, which can uh, help us in uh, diagnosing the patients. It can, it can be used in uh, making ultrasound or something like that. Also may collect the data, and then collect the blood samples, sorry. Another, uh, another techniques like this Egyptian team who are going to uh, do the prostate, uh, prostate removal surgery uh, with robots, which is uh, time, uh, time lower, little time and, uh, uh, and better results, okay. Uh, the second is the, the virtual assistance for nursing. Uh, with the help of virtual nursing assistance, hospitals will be able to reduce sudden hospital visits and reduce the load on medical professionals. Uh, like, uh, like this, uh, for example, this is an application. You can monitor your life, your, your measurements.
So uh, easily you can use these applications to uh, daily doing daily periodic check of vital signs and other uh, uh, others and help the patient whether he needs to visit a doctor uh, or uh, seek medical advice or not. Uh, other, other application of artificial intelligence in administration and workflow. Um, other, uh, other application, it helps monitoring, as we mentioned before. Uh, it, other applications, you can use it uh, in health monitoring like heart rate, or even uh, modulate your treatment like this uh, insulin pump, which is widely used now in Egypt and other countries. Uh, the insulin, insulin pump, uh, measure your, uh, our blood pressure, blood sugar uh, around the clock and sends message permanently adjusting insulin. This is device, this device, uh, this device measures sugars and send measures uh, uh, to this device as you can all of, all of the day, you can uh, know what, uh, what about your needs. But the other, the other thing is that you can modulate, it can modulate your uh, your treatment regimen according to these readings. Uh, treatment designs for individual and hospitals. We can use uh, uh, this artificial intelligence. Sorry, sorry for the voice. Uh, there are elaborate artificial intelligence systems which exist in healthcare sector that are designed to store, analyze data, and make notes and reports, and also make the antibiotic policy planning. This is our experience in uh, in, uh, in antibiotic policy planning, making. Uh, uh, a unified electronic system has been established in 2020 with data entry units distributed to all university hospitals under the supervision of the Supreme Council of University Hospitals, comparing the results and it's easy, easy to uh, build an antibiotic policy. Periodic visits, as you can see this, uh, these visits to uh, make sure uh, the, the, the hospital is uh, already uh, constructing the guidelines and uh, collecting the data. Uh, periodic uh, visits are made by teams of Supreme Council to follow up the monitoring and reporting evaluation of, uh, of hospitals and periodically. And uh, so, uh, through this, uh, this system, and this is uh, kind of information which collected all, all over the hospitals, all hospitals of the country. And this, it's, it's a very, very important thing. Uh, finally, in society up to now, a priority has generally been placed on social, economic, and the generalized organizational systems with the result that gaps have arisen in products and services that uh, individuals receive based on individuals' abilities and other reasons. Achieving Society 5 with these attributes uh, would enable the world to realize economic development while solving key social problems, especially in the context of Sustainable Development Goals uh, 2030. Uh, we are talking today about mankind society progress, the brief history of healthcare evolution and healthcare for advances, artificial intelligence, some applications, and personalized the medicine uh, core concept. Uh, many thanks. Voice, 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 doctor, voice. <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you very much for your yeah, uh, Thank voice. you very much for your uh, And the next uh, speakers. And the next uh, speakers from Doctor Puad Aa Trayek from Doctor Felician King's Trayek. College London. Ayuh, syukur jazila bila Dr. Ahmed Yusuf Al Magister semal mutahdis atali bahwa Dr. Buat Aa Trayek Min Kolej London. Okay, good morning. Whoever unmuted, muted you, mute yourself. Thank you very much. Okay, good morning, everyone. Here in England is good morning. So, and good afternoon, wherever you are around Asia. 
So my name is Fuad Trayek, and I have a PhD in education. I'm a researcher at King's College in London, and as well as a full-time lecturer at London School of Science and Technology. Today, I will be discussing and talking about developing an instrument, which is the questionnaire design. First, what are the questionnaire, or what is the definition of the questionnaire? The questionnaire is a systematic method for gathering information from a sample of individuals for the purpose of describing the attributes of the larger population of which the individuals are members. So usually we use the questionnaire to gather the data when we have a big population. So we select a sample from this population and then we, we can <clears throat> generalize the result from this small group about the entire population. <clears throat> And also through the questionnaire, we could ask people a question, either written or verbally, in order to get the information for the research. <clears throat> through the questionnaire, or the questionnaire produces a quantitative description on aspects of the study. So when we can use the questionnaire, <clears throat> the purpose of using the questionnaire, we could use the questionnaire to study the characteristics of a group. We, through the questionnaire, we could, or sorry, the questionnaire provide us with information to describe a situation. If we are studying a certain situation, we could use the questionnaire in order to gather enough information in order to prescribe this situation. It's also to explain the situations where it's examining the, uh, the cause and effect relationship. We could use it to measure the changes, as well as we could use to study the attributes, behaviors, and habits of the group or of the people. Also, we could use the questionnaire for decision making. Now, the questionnaire basically, it consists of a certain questions. And these questions, they are two different types. The first type of the question we could use in the questioning, we call it open-ended questions. What are the open-ended questions? The open-ended question, it allows the people to express what they think in their own words. So they could write about their own feelings, their own beliefs, their own perceptions, and so on. So they write by their own words. It also enables the respondents to answer in as much details as they like in their own words. If through the open-ended question, we could get a very rich information which could be useful for the descriptive. Example of the open-ended question. What do you think about using technology in the classroom? So here, the respondents will start explaining about his own thoughts by his own words. These are open-ended questions. The second type, we call it closed-ended questions. So what are the closed-ended questions, basically? The, the closed-ended question is a structure answer, or we structure the answer by allowing answer which fit into the categories that we have been decided in advance before we deliver or before we send the questionnaire. It's limit the answers of the respondents to respond to response options provided on the questionnaire only. So here, if the, if the respondents write their own words responding to an, a close ended question, as a researcher, we have to skip that questionnaire or that respondents. We cannot consider that respondents into our study. Example of the close ended question. Are you happy? So here you should uh, you could answer yes or no. So here you cannot just try it about your own feelings, like for example, why you are happy, what makes you happy, and so on. This is we just need an answer, either yes or no. So this is the close-ended question. We give you options, so you select one of these options in order to answer the question. A second example of close-ended question where basically most of the questionnaire will consist of this type of the question where we use Likert scales to measure that question. For example, statistics is an easy subject. Here, 
either you agree or you disagree. So if you think, if you think a statistic is an easy, then you could say, or you could respond here either agree or strongly agree. It depends on how you feel about it. So if you think statistic is a somehow a difficult subject, then here you respond as disagree or strongly disagree. So these are the difference between open-ended questions and closed-ended questions that we usually use into our questionnaire. The closed-ended questions, there are some types of the closed-ended question. The first type, we call it the multiple response or the list. So here is basically, this consists of multiple choice questions where the respondents could use as many answers or options as they think. So here, example, do you travel to class by? You could use food, car, bicycle, train, or you could use all of them. It depends on how you travel to your class. So here respondents, they have an option to select more than an answer, more than an answer or more than an option. The second type, we call it <coughs> rank, rank order scale, where here the respondents, they have to sit on items, okay? Based on their own preference or importance or liking and so on. So here the respondents, they organize or they put their response or their answers in order to their own preference. For example, for example, please rank the following in order from one your favorite to four your least favorite, according to your own opinion. So which one you like the most, which one you don't like, or which one you like the least. So here you could use like pizza number one, for example, chicken number two, rice number three. <laughs> yourself, everyone, thank you. So here you, <clears throat> you order the options based on your own preference, based on your own liking. The third part, uh, sorry, the third type of the close-ended question, we call it rating scale. Rating scales here, we usually use <coughs> Likert scale to measure this kind of the question. So it's allow the researcher to measure the opinions, knowledge, perceptions, behaviors, and extra of respondents in a quantitative manner by using the Likert scale. An example. Example for using the Likert scale. How satisfied are with your cell phone service? So here you could use very unsatisfied or very satisfied. Just a comment here. In this type of the question, only one answer is allowed for the respondent. So for example, for example, if a respondent's answer to such a question, one very satisfied, unsatisfied, sorry, and two as well, unsatisfied. Here, you should not take this respondent. You should skip this respondent from your data analysis because only one answer is allowed, either, satis either unsatisfied or very unsatisfied, okay? So respondents here not allowed to choose more than one option. Here are examples of Likert scale we usually use into our questionnaire. We could use agreement scale. Agreement scale, which is either could be five Likert scales or seven Likert scales, nine Likert scales is up to you as a researcher. But the common use is five Likert scales where it starts from one strongly disagree to five strongly agree. Example for the agreement Likert scale, we could say, I like studying statistics. So here, I like st studying statistics. You could use your own response, either you strongly disagree or you strongly agree or you agree or you disagree. Again here in Likert scale, okay, all Likert scales measures the respondents only allowed to answer or to pick up only one option. They are not allowed to choose more than one option, either two or three, okay? 
The other type of Likert scale, we call it importance. Here where the respondents pick or they identify the answer or the option based on their uh, based on their feeling of the importance of that item. For example, how important is teamwork for you or to you? Here, they could use one, an important, or five, very important. As I said, it's only one answer allowed. The third, option, the third type or the third example of Likert scale, because there are so many types, but I'm just covering some of them. Frequency, here where we measure from one, never, to three frequently or always, sorry, three, uh, five, I'm sorry. One, never, five, very frequently, or we call it always. So here, how frequent you are with this item. So example for that, how often, how often you use phone during your lectures. So either you never use the phone or you always using the phone in the lecture. And bear in mind here, as a researcher, I did not ask what are the purpose of using the phone. I just ask whether you are using the phone or not. So later on, maybe we find whether you are using the phone for an academic purpose or for another purpose. So, but this question is asking whether you are using the phone or not. That's only my <coughs> concern as a researcher. Now, the instrumentation, there are steps to develop or to create our questionnaire. The first step, which we have to choose a framework or a theory that we are building our study based on. After we identifying and deciding and selecting the framework, we move to the second step, which is we, discuss, we decide the variables. So what are the main variables we are going to study into our study? or we're going to major into our study. After we deciding the frame, uh, framework, we decide what are the main variables. The third thing, we make a definition of each variable. So based on the framework itself, we define each variable. We give a definition of the variables. And after defining the variables, we move to the fourth step, uh, step sorry, which is we create the items. We start creating the items based on the definition. Based on each of the definition for the, these variables, we start creating items. <clears throat> After we creating the items, we make sure or we check the alignments between the item themselves and the definition. Are the items is related to our definition? Does the definition is measuring the items and so on. So we check the alignments between the items and the definitions. Once we're done with that step, we move to the sixth one, which is we select the response category or format to measure these items. And I just give examples of that response based on the Likert scale. So you have to me, you have to make sure that you choose the right categories or response to major the items. Once we've done that, we check the alignment between these categories or this response format with the items. Are we using <clears throat> the right and correct response format to measure this question? So for example, if we're measuring the agreement or the question is measuring the agreement, are we using agreement liquor scales or are we using frequencies? So we have to bear in mind that. And I find <laughs> that. Yes. Yes. Uh, time is up for your speech. Okay. Thank Could you. Be only two minutes. Please. Two minutes. Is that all right? Yes. I'm almost done. Thank you very much. So the seven, the eighth, the eighth step is well, wisdom. Please mute yourself, thank you. We start validating our items with at least 15 experts to validate our items or our questionnaire. Once we've done the validation, we receive the feedback from the expert. We calculate something we call it CVR, which is content validity ratio. So content validity ratio 
it must be calculated for each of the items, each of the question in the questionnaire. Once we've done that, we move to the next step, which is <clears throat> we refine and finalize the items based on the feedback we received from the expert. And then we write the instructions for the questionnaire. We start distributing the questionnaire in order to test it with at least 30 respondents. Here we call it pilot test or pilot <coughs> study. We calculate the reliability or Chromepack Alpha. After that, we remove whatever items, problematic items, and we improve the items based on this Chromepack Alpha. And then we refine the final questionnaire and we start the data collection. So the last thing is what are the formula to calculate the CVR? So the formula basically, it's n e minus n divided by two, all on div n divided by two. Here n e it's the respondents or the experts who said this items is okay and can be used. The n capital is the total number of experts that I have sent the questionnaire to. Thank you very much, and that's all from me. Okay, thank you very much for Dr. Puad uh, Trajek from King's College London. And the next speech is Dr. Arif Muhammad Yahya Filsian from National University of Malaysia. The time is yours. <clears throat> Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, mungkin uh, uh, tasma'uni? Sami'ana, sami'ana. Sawdu wadih. Okay, inshallah. Uh, hal, hal kana al-shashah uh, yani zahara fi al- Zahira wadih. Okay, inshallah. Afwan, ana uh, awalan uh, أنا أشكر لأعضاء اللجنة على هذه الفرصة وإن شاء الله أنا فقط أخذ خلال عشر دقائق أو أقل من عشر دقائق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إن شاء الله أنا أريد أن أشارك معكم فقط يعني قليل مما جهزت هذه البحث قليل بحث يعني وأشارك ما أعرف وأنا أولا أنا أعتذر لم أقدر أن أشارك في فيما ترتب أعضاء اللجنة الجدول قبل هذا فيه يعني أشياء لم أقدر أن ماذا اليوم فيه أشياء كثير وخاصة لأخي اليوم هي هو عنده عنده مجلس خطبة له له وأعتذر للأخ الدكتور دمياطي وإن شاء الله فقط يعني أشارك 
قليل من ما جهزت هذه الـ الـ ماذا آه هذا الموضوع آه؟ لكن لم انتظر قليلا اوكي تقويه الموارد البشريه من خلال الاحاديث النبويه في عصر المجتمع 5.0 هذا اول مره يعني قرات قليلا من ماذا سوسايتي 5.0 هذا واريد ان ماذا اجمع بعض الاحاديث و يعني واشارك ما ما اعرف من خلال هذا الموضوع ان شاء الله اولا مقدمه نعرف ان عصر المجتمع 5.0 هذا لمحه عامه عن مجتمع مبني على اساس التقدم والتكنولوجيا بالاضافه الى التوازن بين التقدم الاقتصادي وحل المشكلات الاجتماعيه من خلال نظام تكامل بين العالم الافتراضي والفضاء المادي الاسلام ليس معاديا للتقدم بل يعترف باي تطور لا يتعارض مع الشريعه لقد قدم لنا الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم كحامل للرساله الاسلاميه الكثير من التقدم من خلال تعاليمه من الاحاديث النبويه مثل ما قرانا من كتاب دكتور يوسف القرضاوي السنه مصدرا للمعرفه والحضاره اولا انا فقط يعني اشارك بعض الموضوع او بعض النقاط عن هذا الموضوع قضايا ومشاكل في تكوين الموارد البشريه في عصر التكنولوجيا اولا ان الطريق المختصر او الطريق السريع في اكتساب المعرفه نعرف ان التكنولوجيا هذا يساعد لنا في اكتساب المعرفة عن طريق السريع لكن هذه هذه الأمور أو المعرفة الذي اكتسبنا عن 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 طريق التكنولوجيا هذا لابد أن نعرف وليس كل 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 شيء نأخذ لكن لابد هناك فيه ماذا؟ آه آه نأخذ وأيضا فيه الأمور لا نأخذ فوريا التكنولوجيا التي تتمتع بها في الوقت الحالي لها مزاياها وعيوبها في اكتساب المعرفة الشيء الجيد هو أن أنه يمكن للجميع اكتساب المعرفة أينما كان ومع ذلك فإن العيب هو أن الفترة الزمنية القصيرة في اكتساب المعرفة تجعل بعض الأفراد يفتقرون إلى الانضباط لتصفية المعرفة والمعلومات التي تم الحصول عليها في مجال معين يولد هذا الموقف موقف الرغبة في الحصول على المعلومات مباشرة عبر الإنترنت بحيث يجعل هذا الشيء السريع جدا شخصا ما يعتمد فقط على هذه التكنولوجيا لإجابة فيسأل واحد يسأل ثم يسأل جوجل يسأل جوجل كيف هذه الإجابة وهذا أيضا طريق السريع في اكتساب المعرفة يعني ليس كل كل أمور نأخذ و... آه مثلا لو نع... لو آه ماذا آه نرجع إلى ما قال الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم أن في طلب العلم هذا لابد هناك آه آه ليس آه العلم النافع العلم النافع ثم نريد من خلال ما ما طلب العلم هذا التفقه في الدين والتفقه في الدين هذا لابد من طول الزمان او ليس الوقت قصير مثل ما نرى العلماء العلماء الاجلاء القدماء هم ليس شورت كات في طلب العلم طريق السريع لكن فيه هناك لابد من طول الزمان وقت يعني هذا ولهذا انا وضعت هنا حديثين في طلب العلم من يريد الله به خيرا يفقه في الدين بمعنى ان هناك ايضا 
ومن يطلب العلم لكن الله لا يريد له خير لا يريد له خير فلا يتفقه في الدين وأيضا يعني الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم يوميا صباحا وأيضا مساء فيه الدعاء أن نطلب العلم النافع اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا سل الله علما نافعا وتعوذ بالله من علم لا ينفع هذه النقطة الأولى ثم النقطة الثانية استخدم مهارات التكنولوجية في الحصول على مكافآت الدنيوية هذا من إحدى سوء الاستخدام في تطبيق التكنولوجيا هذا في هدف التلاعب وكسب المكافآت الدنيوية من الجرائم التي تنشأ في هذا الوقت في عصر العلم والتكنولوجيا الأفراد الذين لم يتعلموا المسؤولية والماذا نقول الأمانة يرون فرصة للمكافآة الدنيوية والربح بغض النظر عن حدود الخطيئة والذنب يقع آخرون ضحايا الجرائم التي ترتكب من خلال العالم التكنولوجي وهذا مثل ما ما نسمع من حديث الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول من تعلم علما مما يبتغى به وجه الله عز وجل لا يتعلمه إلا ليصيب به عربا من الدنيا لم يجد عرف الجنة يوم القيامة رواه أبو داود بن ماجه وأحمد من خلال هذا الحديث نعلم أن هناك من يطلب العلم الشرعية علوم الشرعية لكن البنية نية الخطيئة نية أخرى ليس ابتغاء وجه الله يطلب العلم مما يبتغى به وجه الله معنى طلب العلم الشريعة شرعية لكن ليصيب به عرضا من الدنيا لم يجد عرف الجنة يوم القيامة هذه النقطة الثانية ثم ثالثا نقطة ثالثة نشر المعلومات من غير التأكد من صحتها هذا ما نعرف أن الذي الذي حصلنا على المعلومات من خلال واتساب تليجرام خلال فيسبوك هذا كل شيء جيد معلومات هذا لكن لابد من التأكد من صحتها كما قال الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم كفى بالمرء كذبا أن يحدث بكل ما سمع بمعنى أن لا لا ليس كل أمور نريد أن ننشر الذي حصل ليس كل الأمور نعمل سن نرسل إلى الآخرين لكن لا بد أن نتأكد من صحة من صحة الخبر ثم النقطة الرابعة والنقطة الرابعة التكنولوجيا هذا كهذا فن لا وسيلة هذا أيضا خطأ أيضا لا نجعل التكنولوجيا هذا هدفا لكن كوسيلة لنشر الدين ولنشر الخير كما نعرف أن الآن غير المسلمين يستخدم هذه التكنولوجيا من أجل هجم الإسلام هدم الإسلام وأيضا نستخدم وسيلة مثل وسيلة يعني سيم سيم وسيلة وسيلة يعني سمو له وسيلة تكنولوجيا أيضا لا لا نستخدم وسيلة يعني أي أيوة ماذا نقول أيوة نستخدم وسيلة الآن كما نعلم في الحديث الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول أنتم أعلم بأمور دنياكم بمعنى أن التكنولوجيا هذا ليس من أشياء الأمور 
الشرعيه الشريعه يتعلق بالشريعه والدين لكن هذا يتعلق بالامور الدنيويه هذا ما في مشكله نستخدم من اجل نشر الدين ونشر الخير لا نستخدم كوسيله ليس كهدف ثم اعتقد النقطه الاخيره يعني ايوه الاشياء الذي ماذا قبلنا من من ماذا الخبر المعلومات هذا لابد ان نتاكد هناك اشياء هذا وضعته بالنسبه للتنميه المجتمع كثير من النقاش والحج وماذا هناك من يضع يستخدم التكنولوجيا هذا من اجل النميمه النميمه هذا اشياء يعني لا لا يباح من من اخلاق واداب سيئه اعتقد هذا ما ما نريد بعض النقاط اللي انا وضعته هنا من اجل ان 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 نشارك معكم ان ان الاسلام لا يو ماذا ماذا الاسلام ايضا او الاحاديث ايضا نعرف ان الاحاديث ايضا مصدرا للمعرفه والحضاره لا 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 لا, لا يكون عدوا دكتور محمد عارف نعم. يحيى الوقت قد انتهى خير خير ان شاء الله وانا انا هذا الخاتم خاتم ان شاء الله آه آه هذه ما ما بعض النقاط آه ان اشارك معكم فنقول ان الاسلام لا يع... آه ايضا آه التكنولوجيا هذا آه لا مسموح ان نستخدم لكن فيه هناك ضوابط وايضا لا بد ان اداب واخلاق لا بد ان ماذا ناخذ او لا بد ان نتاكد من 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 خلال استخدام التكنولوجيا فقط هذا انا اشكركم واعد وهذا أخذ بعض الدقائق عفوا والأخير هذا أنا أقول لكم أجزاكم الله خيرا كثيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته شكرا كثيرا دكتور محمد عليه شكرا جزيلا إلى الدكتور قد بحثت عن المدى في الحصة في هذه الحصة نستمر إلى البرنامج الأخير هو الاختتام يمكن هناك الكلمات من الدكتور عبد المكيد ربما نعيد إلى الجدول هناك إلى مقدم البرنامج ثم نسمع بعد الدولة الوطنية قبل الكلمة قدم البرنامج جلسة الاختتام من فضلك دكتور عارف لو سمحت توقي في الشاشة عفوا عفوا أنا يعني أشكركم يعني ما زال في الشاشة نعم 
نعم شاشه عفوا انتظر قليلا كيف هذا؟ لو مثالنا كلو لا ادري هذا هو التكنولوجيا Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Abdul Mukid. We will come to the next. Uh, anything session before it? Yeah. Mr. Abul Mukir, we move to the agenda for closing ceremony or any other agenda before closing ceremony? Closing ceremony. Wait. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The honorable all, present, all presenters and all of the audience, thanks for stay until session for closing ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, we move to the next agenda, Singing Indonesian and Egypt National Anthem. Thank you. 
Thank you. The next agenda is which will be delivered by Rector of Hotam Marusalem, Professor Dr. Rajab Al Husseini. Time is yours. Tafadol ya Ustaz Dr. Rajab Jami'ati Khazam al-Mursalid Misa افتح ميوت عندكم يا دكتور رجب من فضلك سعيد أستاذ رجب ليفتح الميوت عنده اللجنة تساعده لأن يفتح المغلق من ميوت يا دكتور رجاب عندكم الصوت مغلق لأنك لم تضغط الميوت افتح افتح المغلق في موت في موت عندكم هل أحد من اللجنة تساعد دكتور رجاب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على النبي الهادي الأمين ثم أما بعد نشكر الإخوة الفضلاء والخوات الفضليات على حضور هذا المؤتمر الدولي للدراسات الإسلامية ICOIS ونشكر الأخ الفاضل دكتور عبد المقيت على تنظيم هذا المؤتمر الدولي ونشكر كل من شارك في هذا المؤتمر سواء شارك ببحث أو شارك معنا بحضور ونسال الله عز وجل ان يوفق الجميع لما يحب ورده طبعا هذا المؤتمر العلمي يسهم بكثير من الامور نحو الانطلاق في المسيره العلميه ونسال الله عز وجل ان يكلل هذا الامر بالنجاح باذن الله عز وجل ثم نخرج من هذا المؤتمر بافادات وامور كثيره تفيدنا ونترجمها الى الارض الواقع ثم بعد ذلك باذن الله عز وجل لا ينتهي الامر عند هذا المؤتمر بل ان شاء الله يكون هناك مؤتمر اخر وان شاء الله نبدا في الترتيب لمؤتمر اخر باذن الله عز وجل مع الدكتور عبد المقيت وهذه المره نستاذن الدكتور عبد المقيت ان شاء الله ان تقوم الجامعه جامعه خاتم المرسلين العالميه بتنظيم هذا المؤتمر ان شاء الله باذن الله عز وجل. طبعا حتى لا نطيل في هذه الكلمه لكن سعدت كثيرا بمن حضر وبمن شارك وسعدت كثيرا بهذا المؤتمر في التنظيم وسعدت كثيرا بهذا المؤتمر العلمي باسهاماته وابحاثه العلميه الذين قدموها ونسال الله عز وجل التوفيق والقبول والسداد جزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله. Thank you uh, for Professor 
Dr. Rajab Al Husseini for your speech. For the next agenda is MOU signing integration will be delivered by uh, Mr. Abdul Mukit, uh, Mr. Dr. Abdul Mukit. Time is yours. I thank the whole. Thank the Makadim al Barnamij. Thank Dr. Rajab, who has spoken the words. نبدأ بالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم سيدنا محمد الرسول الأمين والنبي الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحاب الغر الميامين التابعين وتابع التابعين ومن تبعهم بأحسن إلى يوم الدين مباشر إخوة الطلبة معالي رؤساء الجامعات معالي رؤساء المؤسسات معالي المتحدثين المقرمين المعظمين معالي اللجنة التنفيذية لهذا المؤتمر الدولي الثالث في الدراسات الإسلامية في هذه اللحظة وفي هذه الوقت الباقي أريد أن ماذا نعمل بترسيم المذكرة التفاهم والاتفاقية الذي تم بيننا وبينكم وأخبركم أن هذا المؤتمر الدولي هو من البرنامج الذي اتفقت جامعات كثيرة الذي أذكرها وهو جاء وهي جامعة خدم المسلمين تحت رعاية الأستاذ الفاضل الدكتور بروفيسور دكتور رجب الحسيني الذي ألقى الكلمة آنفا ثم دكتور مصطفى عبد الخالق عبد الله من جامعة سوهاج إجيب معنا دكتور بروفيسور دكتور مصطفى عبد الخالق وينوبه بروفيسور دكتور فتو خليل معنا أنتم يا دكتور يا دكتور فتو خليل أنتم معنا من جامعة سوهاز يونيفرسيتي مصر أظنه معنا منذ السابق يا دكتور فتوح أنتم معنا طيب كأنه يحاول للدخول وكذلك معنا دكتور حسن علي ورسمح من جامعة النجاح برو مرعون أنتم معنا يا دكتور يا دكتور حسن أستاذ حسن من جامعة النجاح البرع برع أنتم معنا يا دكتور حسن كأنهم كأن هؤلاء معنا في هذا الزوم افتح المغلق لمود هذا هو السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله ال... تريد أن تلك الكلمة قصيرة نعم حياكم الله حياكم الله الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على من بعثه الله رحمة للعالمين وحجة على الخلق أجمعين صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد معكم أخوكم دكتور حسن بن الشيخ علي ورسمة رئيس جامعة النجاح في الصومال مدينة برعو التخصص الحديث وعلومه من الجامعة الإسلامية في المدينة المنورة والجامعة لها تقريبا تسع سنوات ولها عدة كليات ولها مدينة جامعية وإن شاء الله تعالى مستعدون تم الاستعداد للتعاون مع الجامعات المتنوعة المشاركين في هذا المؤتمر وغيرها إن شاء الله تعالى في هذه الكلمة المختصرة أود التي يشارك فيها المؤتمر الدولي التالي للدراسات الإسلامية والعربية المقامة بأندونيسيا أشكر القائمين على هذا المؤتمر والإخوة المنظمين له وعلى رأسهم جمعية المثقفين للدراسات الإسلامية بأندونيسيا رأسة الدكتور الفاضل عبد المقيت كما أشكر الجامعات المشاركة من العالم العربي والعالم الإسلامي 
وأشكر كذلك الباحثين والدكاترة الذين بذلوا جهدا في إعداد بحوث قيمة بإذن الله عز وجل وهذا الأمر إن دل على الشيء فإنما يدل على أهمية التعاون خاصة في مجال التعليم العالي وعلى الاستفادة المتطورة من الأنظمة الحديثة وكذلك التكنولوجيا فأشكر أشكركم جميعا مشاركين ومنظمين جزاكم الله خيرا ونحن معكم قلبا وقالبا يدا بيد بإذن الله عز وجل وجزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته عليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته آه شكرا كثير على هذه الكلمة القصيرة من الدكتور آه حسن علي ورشمة من جامعة النجا برعو في الصومال معنا دكتور فتو خليل استطعت أن تفتح المغلق الآن أخبرني دكتور فتو معنا في هذا الزوم لكنه يحاول إفتاح المغلق من في الزوم لم يستطع يقول طيب حتى ننتظر حضوره وإفتاح المغلق طيب معنا كذلك بروفيسور دكتور عبد العزيز فضل الله عبد الباري من Global Leadership University for Islamic Science and Humanities السعودية السعودية العربية أنتم معنا يا يا بروفيسور دكتور عبد العزيز أنتم معنا الأصدقاء معنا في هذا الزوم لكنه يحاول لفتح المغلق لكنه لم يستطع وكذلك معنا دكتور فرحة مفتاح مفتاح من جامعة سيرتي ليبيا اهلا وسهلا بك يا دكتور يا دكتوره آه طيب ثم آه كذلك معنا جامعه بغازي ليبيا آه تقودها دكتوره حريم الشيخي التي تقدم تقدم البحث الفا وهي مشاركه كذلك في بحث اهلا وسهلا بك يا دكتوره حريم وأهلاً وسهلاً بك يا دكتورة ريما عبد الله خاني من فرسان كومباني سوريا وأهلاً وسهلاً بك يا دكتور الحبيب دكتور إبراهيم يونيت من سنة إندرسانا الإسلامي بنفرستي أهلاً وسهلاً بكم أنتم معنا أنتم معنا يا دكتور الحبيب دكتور إبراهيم يونيت معنا يا أنت يا دكتور إبراهيم هل معنا أنت يا دكتور فتو خليل؟ فتو خليل استطعت أن تلقي الكلمة قصيرة نائبا من بروفيسور دكتور مصطفى عبد الخالق عبد الله نعم كان الشبكة تعنقهم للكلام وإلقاء الكلمة وكذلك معنا بروفيسور دكتور محمد خيز علي من مركز أبو حسن اللغة العربية التابع للاتحاد العالمي للمثقفين العرب من ليبيا وكذلك معنا دكتور منير الياس من ايمان كوليدج اوف ايديوكيشن نيجيريا انت معنا يا دكتور منير الياس نعم وكذلك الجامعه او المؤسسات ليد فيليبين جلوبال فيليبين فيوتشر ليدرشيب انترناشونال جلوبال ايجي انستيتوت اوف جلوبال بروفيشنال بنغلاديش هذه كلها كذلك ميديكاب يونيفرسيتي انديا كيف فورم انديا ان الحمد اسلام يونيفرسيتي باكستان هذه الجامعه التي اتفقت وتعاونت معنا في تنفيذ و في في تنفيذ وتحقيق وتحقيق هذا المؤتمر الدولي الثالث ومعنا كذلك 31 الجامعه المتعاونه اتفقت معنا كذلك وهو جامعة دار العلوم بجوانيا الإسلامي بمكاسان وجامعة إنستيتوت ناشيونال لاروي ببوغر معنا دكتور إفريتا إن شاء الله تحضر معنا من الأول إلى من البداية إلى النهاية ومعنا سقلة تنجي أغامة إسلام دكتور كعيزات متقين وهو صاحب الجلسة صاحب المكان صاحب الحاجة والذي نظم البرنامج من الأول إلى الأخير وهو الذي أكثر شغلا لإنجاز 
وتحقيق وتنفيذ هذا المؤتمر نشكر الفاضل الدكتور إمام طبراني واللجنة التنفيذية من سقالة جامعة إسلام دكتور كها إزاد متقين وكذلك معنا أنفرز محمد يسيدن دن سيدن دن رقبان وسقالة جامعة إسلام المجتمع بمقاسم معنا أنت يا رئيس الجامعة أيوة أحمد دنياتي أهلا وسهلا بك يا رئيس جامعة سقالة جامعة إسلام المجتمع أبو مكاسا دكتور فتو خليل أنت معنا استطعت أن تفتح المغلق دكتور فتو هذا المشكلة أصابت أصابتنا وهذه من عوائق من عوائق عصر تكنولوجيا نعم الذي لابد من أن نسير معها مع هذا العصر منسجما لكن هذه من العوائق الذي لابد من أن مدى الناس أن نتجاوز عن هذه العوائق كلها ومعنا سقلة تنجي أغام إسلام النجاح إن دنشا من ديري سنوار جو وسقلة تنجي إلمو شارعة سلافية سمبرتوكو قمقاسا مادورة إندونيسيا وسقلة تنجي أغام إسلام الحميدية بانقلان سقلة تنجي أغام إسلام حسن جفري باويان برسيك معنا أنت يا دكتورة ويوي رئيس سقلة تنجي أغام إسلام حسن جفري باويان برسيك أو كأنها معنا وسقلة تنجي أغام إسلام نبل هدى كابوغان سيدو بوندو سقلة تنجي إلمو أصول الدين دارو السلام بانقلان معنا أنت يا رئيس نعم أستاذ نعم أمر زكا هذا الرئيس سقلة تنجي إلمو أصول الدين دارو السلام أهلا بكم وفرحنا بهذا التعاون والاتفاق ونرجو من الله تبارك وتعالى القبول كل هذا ثم إنستيتوت الكتاري لومبوك لومبوك هذا جزيرة بعيدة في إندونيسيا أهلا وسهلا بك يا رئيس إنستيتوت الكتاري الكتاري لومبوك ثم سقلة تنجي أقام إسلام الهداية بوغور معنا أنت يا رئيس رئيس سقلة تنجي أقام إسلام الهداية بوغور نعم يا أستاذ أهلا وسهلا بك يا رئيس الفاضل أشكرك على هذا التعاون ونرجو من الله تعالى القبول وسقلة تنجي أقام إسلام الفلاح تجعلون كابنو قدير نعم أنا والله أتريد أن تكلم شيئا قليلا الحمد لله خير شكرا جزيلا على حضوركم في هذه البرنامج الحمد لله الحمد لله أشكرك من سقولة أغامة إسلام أليها يا بوغر تريد أن تلك يا كلمة قصيرة أي بستاد أشكركم شكرا شكرا ثم سقولة أغامة إسلام دار التوحيد بندو معنا يا رئيس نعم السلام عليكم يا أستاذ وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله تريد إلقاء شيء قليل الحمد لله الحمد لله شكرا جزيلا شكرا في هذه القرصة السعيدة نحن نشترك في هذه القرصة بارك الله فيكم إن شاء الله طيب يا أشكركم يا دكتور فطو خليل هل أنت معنا؟ تستطيع أن تلقي الكلمة؟ قصيرة لأن دكتور فتوح ال... الذي تحمل المسؤولية من جامعته جامعة سوهاج مصر لإلقاء الكلمة نائبا من رئيس دكتور فتوح خليل أدعوك مرة بعد مرة لو سمحت أو أن هناك الشبكة لم تكن جيدة عندكم طيب معنا كذلك سقلة تنجي علم الإسلام دار باشا عرب مقاسر مقاسر هذا كذلك جزيرة بعيدة في إندونيسيا معنا أنتم يا أستاذ الفاضل الرئيس سقلة تنجي علم الإسلام دار باشا عرب مقاسر أهلا وسهلا أو أنك يحاول الدخول أو يحاول إلقاء الكلام ثم إنستيتوت أغامة إسلام نجهة الطلاب سامبان أهلا بك يا رئيس يا شيخ الحاج محمد طيب المدني معنا أنت يا رئيس إنستيتوت أغامة إسلام نجهة الطلاب سامبان
Tayyib Universitas Islam al Ihya Kuningan. Anta ma'ana ya Rais Jami' Islam al Ihya. شارك في تقديم البحث وكذلك كثير من الاساتذه والدكاتره من جامعه احياء اكون يعني ثم سكولاه تنجي علم شريعه نور القرنين جمبر اهلا بك يا رئيس اهلا بك السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته السلام ورحمه الله الحمد لله يا دكتور بحر العلوم تريد ان تلقي شيئا قليلا Assalamualaikum. 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 على أعمال خيرة إضافية من أجل طلب العلم والنافعة لنا جميعا عمين يا رب العالمين أشكرك ثم من جامعة أوريفرستاس نسبان سابوغر أهلا وسهلا بك يا رئيسنا جامعة نسبان سابوغر وكفالة تنجي أغامة إسلام شيخنا محمد خليل بنكالان معنا أنت يا رئيس هذه من أوائك العصر المعلومات سقالة تنجي أغامة إسلام دارو السلام كومير سوبان أهلا وسهلا بك يا دكتور أهلا بك يا دكتور الحمد لله شكرا تمام بخير أسأل الله في هذه البرنامج استمرار يعني في برنامج الرابعة هذه برنامج وتقول علمية أسالسة أتمنى أن 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 استمرار في برنامج الرابعة إن شاء الله وشكرا جزيلا على اهتمامكم وشكرا جزيلا على كل شيء الذي أعطينا إليكم أهلا وسهلا أهلا بك بك يا دكتور أشكركم و كذلك معنا في هذه الجلسة هناك الأصدقاء والإخوة التي تساعدنا إيجاز وتنفيذ هذا المؤتمر أدعو أدعوكم يا دكتور عائشة أهلا وسهلا بكم دكتور عائشة من أنا معكم الله أهلا وسهلا بحضوركم شكرا جزيلا لكم آه نعم أشكرك بحضور نعم قبل إليك بعد دقيقة كذلك أستمر لذكر الجامعات ونفريتس محمد ياتيربون معنا يا رئيس الجامعة وسقالة تنجي علم إيكونومي إبوي جاكارتا أهلا وسهلا بكم جميعا. هلو. معنا أنت يا دكتور يا رئيس جامعة سكولة تجي علم إيكونومي في جاكرتا. يا. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته أهلا وسهلا أشكركم على حسن هذا التعاون. يا. أريد أن تلقي شيئا. يا. برد برد. طيب شكرا سقولة تنجي أغامة إسلام الرشيد سرابايا يا دكتور صالح صالح معنا أنتم ونفرجتاس بلتا بانك سابق عسي هل أنتم معنا يا دكتور ونفرجتاس قارود رئيسة كأنها رئيسة ونفرجتاس قارود معنا أنت أستاذة الفاضلة وسقالة تنجي إيكونومي مانجمين بيسنس إسلام الأزيزية في مالان معنا يا رئيس معنا أنت يا رئيس ثم سقالة تنجي أغامة إسلام الياسيني بسروان معنا أنت يا أستاذ 
لانه معنا كل الرؤساء معنا في هذا الزوم لكنه يحاول فتح المغلق فتح المغلق بوسيله كما قدم استاذ محمد عارف يحيى انفا بوسيله سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونفرتس العشعري من درس له سباه طيب اشكر الجميع ومعنا كذلك الاخوه الكرماء الدكاتره السعداء الذي يساعدنا دكتور عائشه اشكرك اهلا وسهلا بك يا دكتوره عائشه لرفي من الجيريا الجزائر عفوا دكتور شكرا لكم جزيلا انتم التي منحتم لنا هذه الفرصه ل لملاقات اليوم في هذا المحفل الدولي مجموعة من العلماء والدكاترة الذين استفدنا منهم كثيرا بارك الله في جهودكم شكرا جزيلا على هذا التنظيم الرائع ونسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى القبول لنا ولكم بإذن الله عز وجل ونرجو الاستمرار بطبعات أخرى بإذن الله أمين 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 أشكركم أشكركم ومعنا كذلك دكتور علي محمود الأسمعي يا دكتور علي أنت معنا؟ يا دكتور علي أسمعي؟ الدكتور علي الزائر هل أنت معنا؟ أشكركم جميعا أيها الأساتذة والدكاترة دكتور علي الزائر خالص شكرا لتقديري يا أستاذ نواف دكتور علي محمد الأسمعي أشكر لكم رعايتكم للعلم والسماء وحبكم لهما وأشكر لكم جهودكم على اتمام هذا المؤتمر اشكر جزيل شكر وتقديري لمعالي الاستاذ الدكتور رجب الحسني رئيس جامعه خاتم المرسلين العالميه وللساده رؤساء الجامعات وتقبلوا تحياتي وشكري وتقديري وتقدير زملائي في كل في قسم اللغه العربيه كليه الاداب جامعه خاتم المرسلين و و لكم خالص التقدير والشكر والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته. السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته. دكتور اشكركم يا يا حبيبي الدكتور هذا صديقي الحميم الوافي الذي معنا اول زي مع مع معنا يا دكتور فطوخ خليل اللي استطعت الان فتح المغلق. نعم اسعد الله سبحانه وتعالى يرشد في هذه المحاضرة على حسنه على اعمال خيرة الاضافيه من اجل طلب العلم. أشكرك يا دكتور فطوخ خليل تلك الكلمة ولو قليلا نعم وكذلك معنا دكتور أني الزائر أهلا وسهلا بك يا أخي الكريم أخي الحبيب أشكرك أشكرك ومعنا كذلك دكتور حريم الشيخي الجامعة الليبية نعم أهلا وسهلا بك مرحبا بك أهلا وسهلا بك أشكرك كثيرا وأشكر الجامعة لهذا التعاون وهذا الاتفاق والكل الكل لا أستطيع أن أعطي الفرص لكل أحد منكم أستاذ عبد الفتاح إسماعيل أشكرك يا أخي الكريم أخي الحبيب ثم أستاذ عبد السلام الأنيسي السلام على رئيسي معك معنا انتم استاذ الدكتور استاذ حسام ابراهيم استاذ سلام كل فاطمه كل الكشيري تقرما وتعظيما لكم يا دكتور يا دكتوره الحبيبه على هذه المساعده العظيمه الكريمه التي باذن الله تبارك وتعالى ومساعدتكم الكل استطعنا ان ننجز هذا البرنامج وكذلك لكي محمد طيب المدني رئيس جامعه نجهه الطلاب في انستيتوت اداب الاسلام نجهه الطلاب شامبان اشكركم يا كي ممنونين ممنونين يا دكتور ممنونين واشكرك اشكرك على هذه المساعده واشكر الجميع وبهذا المؤتمر وبهذه وهذا البرنامج وهذه الانشطه تمت التعاون بيننا وبينكم وتمت التفاهم بين جامعتنا وجامعاتكم وان شاء الله نتم الملف لهذا التعاون والاتفاق باسرع وقت ان شاء الله 
wa bi idnillah tabarak wa ta'ala wa ashkurul jami thumma nufawidu al-fursa marrah bi moderator ala hadalika atadir haqqa al-i'tidhar ala kulli al-hafawat allati la taliku bi maqamikum al-'ali wa ashkuruk marrah jami'an al-muhadirin al-mutahaddithin dr Muhammad Arif Yahya ala hadha al-juhd wa kull wa kull نبستي ذكر الأسماء الواحدا فواحدا ثم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. عندي سؤال دكتور. واحدة دقيقة واحدة. نعم نعم. إيه كنا نفتح المجال إلى جميع الدول العربية إذا وجدنا الفرصة ونحن نستعد لهذه المؤتمر الدولي ون وكنا مستعدين. لنفتح المجال على نفتح العلاقة بين بلدين أو بين بين بلاد الأخرى حتى نكمل ما بعد هذا المؤتمر بال 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 كلمة أو بالملاحظة أو بأي ال أدوب في واتساب حتى نعطينا الفرصة إذا وجدنا الفرصة الأخرى هذا سؤال عندي والملاحظة عندنا دكتور نشكرك نعم شكرا يا كي ورئيس إنسيت أقمع إسلام نجاح دكتور لاب شامبان كي هذي الأستاذ الفاضل دكتور محمد طيب مدني الماجستير شكرا كثير على هذا الطلب وهذا الاقتراح نعم كما قد ألقى فضيلة الأستاذ دكتور رجب الحسيني آنفا رئيس جامعة خادم المرسلين بمصر أن هذا المجال ليس مجالا واحدا من المجال الذي استطعنا أن نتعاون على صور المجالات وصور الأنشطات الكثيرة والبرامج المتنوعة بعد إن شاء الله نوسع المجال التعاون مجال التفاهم بأوسعها حتى نستفيد كل منا يستفيد كل منا لهذه الانشطات وهذه البرامج وهذه المؤتمرات. طيب اشكر الجميع عفوا كثير وهكذا مني انا اكرر اختتامي بالسلام وافوض الفرصه مره لمودراتور ثم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته. السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته. السلام وبركاته دكتور. تشرفنا بالتعاون عليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته بارك الله فيكم اخوان جزيل عليكم جميعا نبارك علينا على نجاحكم انكم من جامعه النجاح فرعو الدكتور عبد السلام الانسي فنشكر الجميع على هذا الانجاز وعلى التعاون الرائع والمميز مرحبا وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته دكتور فرحه من جامعه ثانك يو فور اول Brothers in the world. موسوعه <تصفيق> ما تريدون ان شاء الله شكرا جميعا بارك الله فيكم بارك الله واشكركم الجميع آه نختتم لقاءنا بقراءه الحمد لله رب العالمين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك نعم مع عقد الله برعايه الله وحفظه اشكر الجميع انا اتاخر شكرا جزاك الله خيرا جزاكم الله خيرا جزاكم الله خيرا دكتور عبد جزاك الله خير عبد المقيت وجزاك الله فيكم جزاكم الله خير جميعا بارك الله فيكم الله كذلك دكتور امام طبراني جزاكم الله خيرا يا استاذ الدكتور شكرا جزاك الله خيرا جميعا ان شاء الله في السنه صاحب السماحه دكتور امام طبراني الذي يكون رئيس اللجنه لهذا المؤتمر اذا كان الدكتور حسن الدكتور حسن عنده شيء يتكلم العفو منك للاخطاء الكثيره في الزوم حسن شيخ علي ورسما رئيس جامعة النجاح فرعو لا أودعكم أودعكم نحن مستعدون لأي إن شاء الله تعالى تفاهم وتعاون 
ونشكركم جزيل الشكر ان شاء الله تعالى والى الامان يا همام ان شاء الله تعالى جزاكم الله خير سعادة الدكتور معالي رئيس جامعة النجاح برعو الشيخ الفاضل الدكتور حسن شيخ علي ورسمة حفظه الله ورعاه رئيس جامعتنا المباركة شكرا للجميع الحمد لله تم بأون الله سمعنا بأك إن شاء الله جزاكم الله خيرا على موعد مع مؤتمر آخر إن شاء الله الدكتور عبد المفيد إن شاء الله سيعلن عنه وسيقوله لكم بإذن الله إن شاء الله ندعوكم جميعا إليه وننظمه بإذن الله عز وجل إن شاء الله سيعلنكم بإذن الله عبد المفيد إن شاء الله جزاكم الله خير بارك الله فيكم الدكتور عبد السلام والدكتور حسن رئيس جامعة برعو وشكر الله الجميع كل من حضر وكل من ساهم وكل من شارك ببحث أو بكلمة نشكر الجميع وجزاكم الله خيرا بارك الله فيك دكتور رجاب رئيس الجامعة بارك الله فيك دكتور فطو خليل دكتور عبد المقيت أهلا أهلا وسهلا تفضل تفضل السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته دكتور حسن وأنا السلام عليكم دكتور عليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته تفضل دكتور تفضل دكتور خليل شكرا لجهودكم الرائعة وشكرا لكل من كان وراء هذا النجاح لهذا المؤتمر الراقي الذي نتمنى أن يتكرر بشكل مستمر إن شاء الله واسمحوا لي أن أنقل إليكم تحيات معالي الأستاذ الدكتور مصطفى عبد الخالق رئيس جامعة وكلمة قصيرة أود أن أنوه عن دور مركز اللغة العربية لغير الناطقين بها في الجامعة هذا المركز الهدف منه هدف وطني بالدرجة الأولى وهدف ديني وهو أن نسهم في تعليم اللغة العربية لكل المسلمين في العالم ولكل من يريد أن يتعلم العربية حتى ولو كان من غير المسلمين وقد تشرفنا أن كان لدينا عدد مئة وثلاثة عشر طالبا من أندونيسيا وماليزيا في مركزنا الكائن بالجامعة وقد تعلموا اللغة العربية في خلال فترة وجيزة أجادوا اللغة إجادة جيدة وإطمأننا على أنهم يمكن أن يكونوا رسلا لتعليم اللغة العربية في إندونيسيا وفي ماليزيا وفي الحقيقة أنا أتمنى عقد بروتوكول أو تعاون مع دار العلوم بأندونيسيا لتعليم لتبادل طلابي ولتعليم أبنائنا من الأندونيسيين اللغة العربية في جامعة سوهاج وفي الحقيقة نحن نشهد لهم لطلاب أندونيسيا وطلاب ماليزيا الذين تعاملنا معهم نشهد لهم بالذكاء والفطنة وحسن الخلق وكانوا على قدر كبير من المسؤولية مما جعلونا نحاول أن نطور من المركز ومن أنفسنا فأنشأنا لهم أماكن للإقامة أماكن على نظام الفندقة الراقية التي تليق بهم و حاولنا بقدر الإمكان أن نطور من أجهزتنا ومن الأمور التقنية التي يحتاجها المتعلم وأشدد 
وامل يا دكتور عبد المقيت ان يتم باذن الله التعاون بين دار العلوم وبين جامعه سوهاج بين جامعتينا ولاسراء اللغه العربيه ولتعلم اللغه العربيه والدراسات الاسلاميه شكرا لكم لاتاحه هذه الفرصه واكرر لكم تحيات معالي الاستاذ الدكتور مصطفى عبد الخالق رئيس الجامعه ولولا ان ظروفا معه في مدينه القاهره لكان معنا في هذا اللقاء واكرر لكم التحيه باسمي انا الدكتور فتوح خليل مدير مركز اللغه العربيه لغير الناطقين بها شكرا لكم والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته، أشكر الجميع تأخروا نحن نتأخر بهذا ونعم أشكر الجميع. جزاكم الله خيرا دكتور خليل ودكتور عبد المقيد الدكتور خليل ذكر لكم التعاون مع طار العلوم، الدكتور عبد المقيد إن شاء الله بإذن الله عز وجل سوف يتحدث معكم الدكتور خليل في هذا الأمر بإذن الله عز وجل وهو يشرف بالتعاون معكم مع جامعة سهاد ونشكر الجميع كل من حضر ومن ساهم إن شاء الله بإذن الله نحن نسعد بهذا التعاون إن شاء الله نحن نسعد كثيرا بهذا التعاون بارك الله فيكم وكلا الله خطاكم بالنجاح اللهم وإن شاء الله بإذن الله سيكون هناك ورشة عمل أو اجتماع آخر إن شاء الله دكتور المقيد ينظم معكم مع رؤساء الجامعات كلها التي تم مع الاتفاق سواء الجامعات القدامى والجامعات الجنود لتفعيل الاتفاقية وتوجيه الأفكار وإن شاء الله بإذن الله حتى يكون هناك مؤتمرات ودورات بإذن الله مشتركة متعاونة بإذن الله عز وجل بين الجميع تفضل دكتور عبد المقيد بارك الله فيكم نعم شكره شكر الجميع إن شاء الله الله يسر يسر الله جميع الامور جميع الحوائج والمقاصد ان شاء الله نرجو من الله القبول طيب شكرا كثير اتاخر لكن هذا التاخر ليس للبعد لكن للقرب معكم ان شاء الله لاقرب بل لاقرب ان شاء الله السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله هل أنت وقت الندوة؟ ما زال بعد Thank you.